I'm Dave Lane from the uh, Open Source Society, uh, among, among other places. But um, I've been given the task of uh, explaining a word which um, makes up at least half of the words in the title of this conference. And hopefully, uh, people have a bit of a grasp of it. I think it will um, help to uh, frame the conversations quite, quite substantially. No? So I'm going to be defining, defining the word open for the purposes of open source and open society for, the, for that context. Because um, obviously the word open has a lot of different meanings to, well, pretty much everybody who hears it probably has a slightly different flavor of understanding. And it also depends on the context in which you use it. So open is an interesting one because um, like many other words that we hear incessantly, day in and day out, things like natural and low fat and organic and uh, words like that. Um, the word open has been um, used and abused uh, in, our, in our world to an extent that um, I, I like to think leads to something called open fatigue. Um, you know, we, we, we all have this idea that um, open things in general are better, right? We have this kind of gen general sense. I think most of you who are here will probably think uh, that, that this open thing, the word open, signifies something that's better. Um, unfortunately, the word is also so vague um, that it has been, the marketeers have leapt upon it and have um, seen the opportunity to stretch and pull and prod its meaning in such a way that it can be pulled over the edge of the thing that they're trying to hawk to you. And uh, even if the thing that they're trying to sell to you actually isn't really open in any conceivable way, they'll find an angle which allows them to justify it to themselves. And um, so we, what we do is we, we have this dilution of the term open. And um, so what I'm trying to do uh, with this definition is to uh, bring it back to what I think is the essence of the term in this context. Um, I'd like to uh, show you a group of people that I think understand the essence. Um, all of these kids, I think, um, understand the meaning of the word open in a way that most of us have been forced by, by the conditions in our lives to try to forget or repress. The, um, the thing that these kids are all taught, and most of them actually already know it innately, is this thing. And to me, the essence of openness is the concept of sharing. And we encourage it in our kids, and then we progressively try to teach them how to stifle that desire to share, which I think is a natural human desire. And it's a, a huge, it's a latent human desire that, that exists for, um, for all people, really. And, and I think um, we're in a time now, in an age, where, where the ability to share has never been greater because we have the internet. Um, yeah, I think. I mean, I've been, I've been working in the world of open source for 20 years, and I've pretty much not used anything other than open source for 20 years. And uh, to me, it's been a, a, um, it's been a huge source of passion for me and a huge source of insight. And I've been just um, completely swept up in the, what, what appears to be a rising tide, which, which, as many of you will have heard, lifts all boats. And to me, that is one of the most beautiful um, concepts that each of the little contributions that we can make to an open world can help people we never met, we don't even know, we've never even, didn't even know exist, but that, that we can help them through our actions, through our openness. Um, the purpose of this, the purpose of this conference, I think, is to help the people um, who are attending get over this discomfort that they feel, this dissonance that they feel with the idea of sharing and openness because we're so conditioned now in our, in our world where closed is the default position, particularly in things like government and most of our business dealings and so on. Uh, it's to try to identify what, where that discomfort actually lies and to, to remedy it, um, to, to work out how you can make it feel okay again and to work out an action plan for, for, um, for making open that feels right, be right. Um, I suspect that most of you are actually here today because you're either already working towards open in your own existences or you want to understand what this buzz is all about. 
because everybody's talking about it. Um, many people won't, won't realize that actually the most widely used computing platform in the world today is open source. So um, Linux, which was mentioned earlier, um, is now running on substantially more computers than any other operating system. Um, so it's actually kind of a core of our technical ecosystem. Um, and I hope, I hope to show in this conference how much power you'll find in the principles of openness. Um, openness, the first thing that leaps to mind for people with, with, with regard to openness is the idea of transparency. But what I want to say is that transparency is necessary, but it's not enough. In addition to transparency, we need to have the ability, so transparency is the ability to see what is happening. It's kind of a passive thing. You, you can look at it, but, but you can't necessarily do anything more than look. Um, in order to really understand something, though, you now have to be able to do more than look, with, look at it. You have to be able to work out the how things work instead of just the fact that they do or, or what they look like. You have to work out how they work. You have to work out why they work. And then most importantly, you have to work out what could you do differently? What if, what if you change this? What if you change that? And you need to be able to poke and prod things that are open in order to learn, to deeply learn what they actually do and, and what they're all about. Um, by the way, um, I'm sure the uh, astute amongst you will have worked out that this is, in fact, an exploded view of a donut machine, which um, was one of the few exploded view things that I could find under Creative Commons license on Flickr. But anyway. Um, so the key to fostering community around open, I think, is to recognize that it requires someone in a position of power to take a leap of faith and to relinquish control one of the things about openness is that it is allergic to attempts to control it. And in fact, it, the, you will probably have heard the adage that the internet is, um, the, the open internet, I should point out, is, uh, is capable of routing around censorship because it, it, it sees it as damage. And basically, censorship is a form of, of control. And the idea with openness is that in order for it to thrive, you have to do, um, you know, people say, if you love something, set it free, even though that feels uncomfortable and so on. Basically, openness is, <laughs> well, not to be too twee about it, but openness is effectively a demonstration of love for the world. You know, that's, that's, that's how you can show that you love the world. And the, the beauty of what our technology platforms allow nowadays is for, for us to tra attract global groups of people who have never necessarily uh, collaborated with each other before to invite them and enable them to contribute, to, to participate in something, and to more than just participate, to take ownership of it. Um, and to scratch their own itch, um, you know, sorry, they can scratch their own itch, and more importantly, the things that they do to scratch their own itch then can be available for others who have other riches to scratch, but might be able to use that as uh, you know the handle of the back scratcher. Um, you know the 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 idea that you can uh, accrete all of this capability, all of this knowledge in a form, in a canonized form, in software, for example, or in um, in the in the society sense, you can do it with policies and practices and so on. But the idea that that these things all become part of a commons. And I see the commons in the digital world as being that, that rising tide. People buy into and commit to communities where they have something that, where they feel that they have something that they can share and they can offer. That's what motivates us mostly, I think, to participate in communities. Um, we don't generally do it for a financial, out of a financial motivation. A lot of us just like to do stuff with people. Um, and I think that in order to really build a, a, a vibrant, open uh, community, we have to have that release of control, and we have to have the ability to participate and contribute and to share ownership. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that's what I've already said. One of the coolest things about openness, and this is something that's only relatively recently become really clear to me, is that one of the things that, that control of an of a, of a ecosystem does is it, for, it creates gatekeepers for, um, it, it creates, sorry, it creates gatekeepers for uh, the ability to participate. Things like the open internet and open source software remove the gatekeepers and they replace them 
with simple, role, simple rules, which you can, if you adhere to those simple rules, like for example, taking part in the internet requires you to have a computer, you can buy something for $25 that will do the job, that has the hardware that knows how to talk TCP IP. You need to have access to the internet somewhere, somehow, which is pretty easy to find these days. And then you need to have an IP address. And most places will give that to you. You've, you've, you've been handed one today if you're connected to the internet here at the, uh, in the auditorium. And those are the building blocks of participation. Once you adhere to those simple rules, if you have an idea, you can realize that idea and you can take it to the world with no further barriers, none. Well, except for most people see you for patent infringement, but that's another story. Um, so I think that this is one of the most powerful ideas about openness, um, is that the idea that, that we can expect or we can, we can receive innovation from anywhere and we will never know, we will never be able to predict where the innovation will come from. And that's the beauty of it. I mean, to my mind, that's the most exciting thing about openness is that people who previously were, didn't have the agency or they weren't enabled to, to participate. I, I, I can only imagine what's gonna happen when people in parts of the world that don't currently have good connectivity or have repressive regimes and so on, when they, when they by all the means that they have been acquiring them already, um, fulfill the, the manifest destiny of joining the open community, the open world, they will be a source of huge innovation. And I'm, I, I, I can't begin to imagine what they're gonna to bring to the world that we haven't seen yet, and it's gonna be exciting and brilliant. Um, it's important to recognize that openness is not a state of being. Uh, it's a kind of a continual cycle of action and reflection. We live in a world where closed is, is the expected norm at the moment. And, we repress those tendencies, those, those urges to share because of uh, intellectual property, for example, and the threat of the Trans-Pacific Partnership Agreement and other things like that, which are um, kind of an immune response from a world that realizes that its ability to control closed is being taken away from it by the rest of society, the 1% realizing that the rest of us have something to say. Um, to my mind, and I think probably for most of you here, the concept of openness just feels right I like to say that open just tastes better to co-opt uh, a marketing uh, catchphrase for junk food. Um, sorry, just tastes better, I should say, not just tastes right. Um, so this conference will explore other opportunities and mechanisms for achieving openness, and I encourage all of you to pick the steps that you yourselves are gonna take to increase your own personal openness, because I think all of us have decided to pick various battles that we're willing to fight. I probably have, um, having had 20 years to work on it, have leaned more heavily towards the openness than some. Um, and it has, it, has its, um, it has its challenges, mostly because um, openness um, extracts a sense of responsibility from people who participate in it. Um, the need to uh, ensure that, that not only do you, not only can you take ownership of open stuff, but you kind of have to in order to make sure that it works for you. And so that empowerment comes with, comes with a, a flip side, and that is that you, you, in order to accept and make use of the power, you have to actually contribute back to it. Um, we need to accept also that not everything will be open right away. Um, you know, as I say, we pick our battles, um, but the key thing is for us to recognize that there's an ideal at stake here. And uh, I mean, I'll explain why these these, there are threats to that ideal, but the ideal is that we will always move towards openness when we see it in our, when we see closeness in our lives, we'll, it'll be a bit of a niggle for us that will um, make us feel uncomfortable and make us feel like it's something that we have to change. We might, be, not, we might not have time or energy to change it right now, but we know that it's not as good as it could be because it's not as open as it could be. Um, there are a lot of people out there, as I mentioned at the start of the talk, who are, who are trying to trade on the idea of openness as, and, and you know, build themselves as, as, as the bastions or the, the exemplars of openness. And I think it's important for us to evaluate and investigate all these things. One of the other prices of openness is constant vigilance and constant um, reflection and, and skepticism when we see, see things around us. We have to try to understand as much as we can about the world around us. There are people out there who um, use the concept of, of openness to sell things that aren't open. And I think as a community, what we need to do is we need to call them on it. There's this concept of open washing, 
and if open source, <laughs> some of you might have heard that, but this concept of open washing, which is to you know, misuse the term open to actually mean something that's closed. Um, and so I think that the key thing is that we don't have the capital behind us that, uh, and the, the lawyers that um, the corporations of the world, for example, have, but we have community and we have the court of public opinion and we have the ability to call, hold people to account in that. And I think that's even more powerful and in fact, I happen to know that a lot of uh, organizations that would dearly love to retain control and to keep things closed basically um, are searching for new shorts because they realize that it's uh, too late. The, the horse is bolted and the world is opening. Um, it's too, yeah, the tipping point has been reached and now it's just a matter for us to work out how to control, or not how to control, how to harness what we've, what we've created. Um, so I'd like to leave you with uh, an idea. Like a lot of people think that this concept of openness is really pretty novel and pretty new. I would like to suggest that it's actually not nearly as new as you might think. And in fact, there's something that occasionally um, occurs to me when I'm feeling a bit down the dumps about things not being as open as I'd like. And uh, it occurs to me that just about every town that we know will have a bastion of openness, a, kind of a beacon of what, um, what it means to be able to have community and to share. And I just want to leave you with this image. Uh, whoops. <laughs> this image. Because um, they exist in all of our communities and they fly in the face of all of the... Um, they fly in the face of all the conventional wisdom that, that business tries to, well, convince us is conventional wisdom. The idea of, of um, you know, we need, to, we need to not share, we need to maximize revenue for, for corporations and ensure that their, their profit motives are, are, are addressed um, as a first priority and then everything else is just gravy. The, the number of times that I've been literally laughed at by telling people that I was going to start a, you know, I, I ran an open source company for 14 years until I, I, uh, I sold it to another open source company. Um, and uh, the idea that you could make a living and make a business out of giving away things and sharing, people would literally laugh at me and they would actually, they would accuse me of being suicidal and self-destructive. They, they, they were that um, offended by the idea that I would do this. And yet, who hasn't benefited from the fact that uh, libraries have been open and sharing for a lot longer than uh, corporations have been around. Um, so, that's it. And yes, thank you very much. And please feel free to download this talk and use it however you might like. It's available there. The whole talk is Creative Commons licensed. The entire platform that it's been used to present it is open source as well. So. You can just grab the files and create your own versions of it if you like, and I would be very keen to hear about it if you do. Thanks very much.